Yeah, we yeah, jump. Well, what would you like to say? We're gonna we're gonna uh jump on to the next one. How you go ahead, though, you good? Oh you no, good. go ahead. Now nah, y'all good, go ahead, go ahead, jump on. Because I gotta you go sure? in like 25 minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um I I kind of got this from um from you, Lou. Um, looking at how you post and how you um, encourage people, uh, entrepreneurship and stuff. So I titled it The Harriet Struggle, The Underground Railroad. And, you know, basically from a history lesson, a quick history lesson and whatnot, uh, you know, she was the one that led you to freedom. And so I think what, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Lou, but I think you trying to encourage people to like be more entrepreneurs, self-employed or whatnot. But just like back then, and even a little bit now, you know, with, I, what was the movie Django? Like you had some slaves that wanted freedom, so they they followed her and listened to free to go to freedom. But then also at the same time, you had the type of slaves that was like, "Oh no, I'm I'm comfortable here." So that's why I said the path of freedom, which is black ownership, and then also you have the plantation stability, which is um, don't please don't take this the wrong way, you guys that are watching. But uh, please I know don't, that please we, we, don't. Ha we have to have jobs. I get that. Please don't. But but also in the process of you maintaining your job for stability and comfort and to have a roof over your head, you can also take time to either on your lunch break or on your days off. You can do other side hustles to make sure that you have extra sources of income and to the fact where you can get off that plantation, leave out that factory, leave from that manufacturer, you know. So that's why I said the path of freedom, which is black ownership, and then also the plantation stability. Because people, when I meet people, I know I'm built different. I know I'm wired different. Like I just met a guy who said he was at a job for 15 years. I was like, what the fuck? Mm, I ain't never God. been that committed mm. to something. I mean, that's remarkable, you know, but I've just never could picture myself at somebody's job giving them 15 years of my life. And I don't have nothing to show for it, but still paying rent and still like that's. But how do you feel about that, um, Lou? The, pla the path to, uh, yeah, uh, the path to uh, black ownership are the, the people who prefer to stay confined in the walls of the, you know, their the security of their job. Yeah, yeah, just you know, just to provide for the family, you know, right. keep it like that. But um, to each his own with it, you know. Uh, if you feel like you could be able to own your own boss and handle the, the job to the performance that you could product. Or that I can put up, then you know you you can leave your. It's all about you. If you have faith in yourself, and you know, like like I say, like you just have to, you know, if you have faith in yourself and you're able to provide it. I mean, you know, do the services like the boss man could do it. Then you know that. Then you could probably take on your leadership and probably invest in something you would want to do. But you know, if you have like your record allows you not to get a business license or anything you may have to take the other route you know just follow you know instructions so it's like and you know either i got this decision or i have to make this decision because my co-partner ain't gonna help out with this decision then i gotta move on to the next decision you know what i'm saying so it's all about your record and all about your leadership uh all about like basically care of yourself your character so Right. And you and got I, a good I, background, it's speak for you, you know what I'm saying? So, I, yeah, like especially when you go to venture off on your own, like like you said, the background and the character. When you when you go to reach out, uh, branch out on your own, people know your or respect your your work ethic, so they'll support you. You know, yeah, that's that's basically it. And the, um, like I said, it's it's your decision. Like we know some people can't get jobs. We know some people don't have. You know car insurance, you know, people struggling right now. So like I said, man, I just asked someone to respect me at my job. I don't think I'm your friend. It is business, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get this job done. That's it. Like, I'm not, I, I provide five stars. That's it. If your life don't match mine, then this job, you know, may not be for you. You know, your outside duties, you handle that. But when you come to this job, make sure you have your mind right and perform this job. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I treat my job like a warehouse job. That's why I always work at. I got I have my CDL, you know, I have other things coming. I can't tell everybody that. But you know, so it right. just you, you know, you just have to be able to perform that job the right way, just like you'll do at at another company, Wal Walmart, McDonald's. Don't don't, you know, don't try to disrespect my job if I'm gonna start you off at a certain price number one. You know, I'm feeding your pockets. So if you can't perform a job in a certain amount of hours of scheduling, 
then your performance start to go down. I worked that performance, that's what we had to do. We had to perform. So right. what that means, perform this. Every night, we had to run a 95%. Then it went up to 100%, you know? So I was a guy running 140, 150 every night, you know? So, and at the end of the week, I averaged off like a 135 or 140. So, you know, we, we was getting paid incentive, you know, bonuses. So we was getting paid different ways. So it, you know, I just carried the same model. Hey, man. Right. It, it, hey. And I man see, that I don't see you, you know work he don't eat you know what I'm saying right so I see you post I see you post um something where you said uh make a hundred dollars in two to three hours or make a hundred dollars in eight hours and, and you know that's too much money come on now you know what I'm saying just it's just to get people to move out the house bros don't want to move because they were relying on the government assistance I'm gonna be 100 with you no woman don't want no guy on the government assistance anyway and applying himself nobody don't want that nobody like that you know what I'm saying? Then it, it just straight up. Like, I mean, if you're out here and blind yourself to these hands, the tools you're blessed with, then, I mean, it's hard to come by somebody like that to be stable and feel protected. Feel, you know, it's women want all these securities. You got to know the woman. So that's why it's a must. We all get to know ourselves, you know? Right. So getting to know who you are, you'll be able to provide and, you know, work on things. We all go through struggles and, you know, mental health issues. Hey, it is what it is, but you got to know how to manage things. You got to know how to take care of your body. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say it's always about what you intake, you know? So I drank my water. See, I started, you know, I, I just sterilize my water and stuff like that because, you know, the tap water ain't good for you. So you're not drinking it. alkaline water. You want to make alkaline water. So that's with a lemon and lime or fruit. So, you know, you got to understand the benefits behind all of this. So that's what I provide. You know, if you need any addition or help or how to wake up fast, you know, do the daily, you know, uh, intakes on anything, you know, I, I provide that. So workouts, you know, I'm a provider. So I, I, that's what I do. It's a body movement, especially it's an overall thing, you know what I'm saying? So from moving, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna separate it soon, you know, so everybody have an understanding. It's separated. If you look at things on on uh, U-Haul, the moving services, and look at the prices right there, you'll have an understanding why I charge my prices. So don't, don't lowball me. My boy Eric McFadden set the prices for the end town. So, hey, man, you got to go with that. So I, I can't lower my prices because you can't afford the prices, you know? So Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, Kiki, how do you feel about that? How do you, uh, people struggling between doing black ownership, like going into business for themselves versus just the comfort of just staying at the plantation or a factory for, for forever? You know, how do you feel about that? Okay, so Michelle got to come in a little bit here. Go ahead. Just a tad. But um, my my whole thing is everybody can't be a pastor because everybody's not called to be a pastor. And I, and I use it that way because you know a pastor is the the head of that particular building. Right. Now he's not the owner of it, but he's the head of that particular building. So the thing is, if everybody's a pastor, then who's your deacon? Who's your choir member? Who's your this? Who's your that? So for someone that not necessarily out of a comfort, they can dedicate 15 years or more to a job, then that's what they can do. Because if you don't have your factory workers, you don't get your, you don't get certain foods. You don't get your cars. You don't get, it's a bunch of stuff that we wouldn't get without the factory workers. Um, but now if they are there just for a comfort and you have been gifted and talented to do more and to own your own and everything, I feel like, you know, they should try to run for that freedom and get there. Right. But everybody's not called to do that that head thing like I'm not saying nobody don't have a like you know everybody don't have a calling yes you have a calling there's something you're supposed to do and there's something you can do to benefit any and everything not any and everything but to benefit or to be a benefit but everybody can't be a pastor so I don't necessarily say you got something that's comfortable being at the plantation and then you got those 
that's not comfortable. But then you have those that don't understand, don't know, don't have anybody to guide them or to lead them. My great grandparents were sold off the off the slave ship at the plantation in Charleston. So the whole thing is they got they had received their freedom later, but it's just still the point that they got you know they got captured basically. Right. Because I'm quite sure if it was up to them, they'd have stayed over there. But so yes, I don't really look at it as a a, a freedom or a captive thing. What I what I can say or how I can say I would look at it as embrace what has been embedded in em, embrace your gift embrace your talent reach for it try for it, it it's going to take time it's going to take sacrifice it's going to take a whole bunch of stuff like you like pastors they sacrifice they go through things they all they they do all that stuff that's like a prophet you can be called a prophet but everybody can have the gift of prophecy it's a it's a difference to it so right right so yeah. so basically what i'm saying in here uh for those that are watching um don't quit your job but make it make sense so like if you're working your job your factory job but you also let's say you um do uh you make t-shirts you know or jackets do that while you still like on the side of your hustle but once you see you you start making let's say consistency let's say for the last year or two or two years that you've made more money doing your t-shirt or jacket business versus being there and you know you're devoting so much time to that company you start wondering like well how much would i really make if i took the eight hours eight to twelve hours that i spent there and i actually put it inside my you know my business that's what i'm saying so uh courtney how do you feel about it um um honestly what keek uh keek i don't call you kiki i don't know why i don't know why that's even trying to come out my mouth um <laughs> <laughs> what Kisa was saying, I was feeling that because I'm like, not everybody, not everybody wants or needs to be a CEO or you know start a business and stuff like that. It's basically what you're saying. Those workers, you need those workers there. Um, and I think you were saying like people should focus on maybe having multiple sources of income, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, you're not just I, relying on the white man, you know, per se. Right, because you you know business. the business venture that I'm trying to at least you know begin to right, start. Right, right interesting in but that's not necessarily like something that like it's a ceo it's just you know it's just a bit you know the, i don't know how to describe it without you know saying it but it's not that type of business where i'm like a ceo type of figure so it's that's your, but you will be yeah kind um, of you're, you're the really. founder of it you will be the ceo once you listen you put whatever you want to put on your business card baby <laughs> you could be the president really, but <laughs> That's how I, I feel, feel you though, Courtney. I feel what you <laughs> Yeah, that's basically how I feel about it. I mean, everybody's just not, and cut out is not the word, but not everybody wants to be a CEO. Not everybody needs right, to right. be a CEO. Um, yeah, so. All right. Uh, uh, Daniel, how do you feel about it? I did I did step away while you talk. Can you just repeat the question for me? Yeah, um, basically Harriet Tubman struggles. You know, uh, you know, she tried to repeat, uh, try to leave people, black people, slaves to the path of freedom. But some people went with her, and some people stayed because of the stability of what they had there, what they already knew. So, bring it to modern terms. Some people choose not to be in business for themselves, make their own money. They rather just stay at factories or plant plants or you know, for years and not do anything else. And after they retire, then they still complaining about they ain't got enough money to do this. They ain't got you know. So how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, we we just got to get out of our own way sometimes. All right. And one of the one of my favorite quotes is, uh, "There's no growth in comfort, and there's no comfort in growth." So a lot of times, a lot of people they're not afraid of failure; they're afraid to succeed because they're not going to know what to do next. Like I didn't think I'd make it this far, so now I'm kind of scared. I'm freaked out. They're I uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? And they, they don't realize that, oh, you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You're really growing. And that's the reason why you're uncomfortable. A lobster doesn't know that it needs to molt from its shell until it gets uncomfortable. That shell gets too tight. You know what I'm saying? We can't Come on, continue. Daniel. I'm just saying, <laughs> we can't continue <laughs> to like to conform to the plateau. You know what I'm saying? Um, we can't 
continue to grow a little bit and then be like, okay, that's enough. And then just stay the straight line. There are some people that are totally content with doing that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? If you're content with your nine to five, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to grow. I, I, I tried to, I was a supervisor and I tried to uh, promote uh, a, a worker of mine into another uh, position that was like mine. And he was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to do it. I don't. And I was like, why? He was like, because I don't want to, I don't want no more responsibility for $2 raise. And I'm telling him like, it's not about the raise. It's about it's your scary. resume. Yeah, the experience. You know what I'm saying? So now, like me, I can literally go to a job and be like, you have a management position open. I have right. management experience. You know what I'm saying? This is what I can, this is what I expect from my pay wage. You know, I, 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 this is, but there's people that's content with still being on fries at McDonald's instead of being the general mint. You get what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. If, you, if that's what you want, just don't complain. That's, that's, that's the issue there, the complaining and right. the coming and borrowing, trying to borrow money from me. I ain't got it. It's, it's, it's a candy. Yeah. That, that's what, that's what I get. And, that, and whenever somebody complains about like, well, I don't, you know, I want to do more. I want to do more. I can't do more. Why can't you, why you think you can't do more? Because you already using the wrong word in your vocabulary. Can't. Right. And that's stifling you more than you know. It's stunting your growth more than you know. Our tongue is just like cigarettes. You smoke cigarettes, you put negativity on your tongue, you are not going to grow. The, the, the universe has no choice but to listen to what you profess. That's the power that God gave us. You know what I'm saying? So that's my thoughts on it. I don't know if that makes sense to what you, because that question is a little bit confusing. But. <laughs> well, you answered it pretty well. Wait, okay, good, good. How do you feel about it? Um, I pretty much co signed what everybody said. I think everybody pretty much summed it up. You know, I feel like before you got to crawl before you can walk. So, you know, it's definitely necessary for you to have dreams and aspirations outside of what you're doing for someone else so if you're clocking in and out and you're whatever you're doing is fulfilling somebody else's dream or whatever you're doing is putting money in somebody else's pocket and the only thing you're getting paid for is what you do in an hour like yeah you definitely need to think about other ways to to put into uh put things in uh, out there for yourself and to go not even if you don't want to necessarily go into business like create your own streams of income and I definitely feel what Courtney was saying, you know, some things you don't want to necessarily grow or be the owner, operator, or, you know, make it go any further. So, like, just say, for instance, like, with blogging. So, I have my own blog site, but, of course, you know, if you're really into blogging like that, you can make money off of it. You can monetize and make money off of that, um, you know, but... Some people do it, some people don't. So for me, I really just want to have a platform where I'm able to communicate like my opinion on certain topics, bring awareness, highlight different people in the community. Like that's just what I want to use it for. You know, so that that's that could be an area where I, I create a stream of income, but that may not be my primary source. That may be something I just, you know, want some money on the side and I want to some do to buy the groceries. Um, say that again. So I'm just saying something to buy the groceries. It doesn't have yeah, to be a six-figure yeah. thing. Like if you make a hundred dollars right. a week, that's still a profit. You put that towards your light bill. Right, right. So true, I totally true. agree. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I totally agree. No, no, you could you could, yeah. It's like so stuff like that. And um, I don't know if anybody had a chance to um uh well, I know Ashley did. I don't know if anybody had a chance to read the blog featured guest that I did with my cousin who's a, a financial analyst. But a part in the interview, we were talking about um creating generational wealth. And also about um, creating these seven streams of income or multiple streams of income. And, you know, that's definitely good. And I think sometimes, though, people get caught up and I need to have three and four jobs. Like, I need to be selling plates. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. I need to be doing that. The goal is not to have seven jobs. You don't need seven right. jobs. You need you need to be doing something that's going to also be making you, Works that you're you. going to be earning passive yeah, you're going to be earning passive income. Mm -hmm. So you need something that's going to be making money while you are, you don't, you know, sleep. you out doing whatever. Why you're yeah, while you sleep. <laughs> while yeah. you sleep, but your business Residual is making income. money. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's also something to think about. Like, you don't want to be just busy and doing work. Like, you don't want to have to be doing the groundwork for seven different things or seven different businesses. So that's why it's also good to 
strategize. Like if you need somebody's help, like there are consultants out there that can help you strategize because there are people out there that have so many great ideas mm -hmm. and they're gifted in so many different areas. And it's hard for them to kind of devote their, their thoughts and focus just to one thing. But you do have to uh, strategize those things and businesses to get the most out of them. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about. Um, and also, too, I was going somewhere else with that. Um, oh, yeah. So like when you're creating these businesses and you're getting multiple streams of income, the important thing <laughs> is to like, what are you doing with the money? So, you know, OK, you're getting the money. Like, I feel like if you start off, you're just you have a nine to five or you're clocking in and out. you got an hourly salary, whatever you have. You know, you have that. But, you know, you, you use part of that money. You're like, hmm. I want to start like Ashley. I want to do a food truck. I want to do whatever. You take part of that money, invest in whatever the business is you want to get. That you get your food truck going, and now the first income was supporting the food truck. Now your food truck may support a different business, and you know that's how you do. Like you still have to be conscious. I guess it's just money management. Like in it, addition it's to starting those money businesses, that's definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, and creating those streams of income, it's important to realize and understand how are you managing that money. Because again, I think I see it a lot of times and people just get so stuck in that. Like they got this business, that business, this business, and they're literally working. Like you're not creating, I mean, I'm not going to say they're not creating generational wealth, but you know, because you do have to put your time in, you know, you got to work in, and get stuff off the ground and all of those things. But once you get it to that point, you should step back. You should be doing less and less work. You know, you hit the ground running when you first start out putting all the work. As your business grows, you should be stepping back and back where your business can operate. That's why it's important when you're starting out, like, you know, you maybe it is just you, but as you grow, you get more money, you get more sources, you start, right. okay, I need to hire an assistant. I need an assistant right, because right. I can't I can't pay attention to overbook and I got this appointment, that appointment. Okay, you need to hire an assistant. You get an assistant. You say, you know what? I need to I need to hire me like even if you got a hair shop, you know, you're doing everybody's hair. You're like, I, I need more time to just focus on doing hair. You know, I might need to just hire a shampoo person. I need somebody who's right, going to come right. in and shampoo the hair so I don't have to worry about that. So as you elevate, you have to think about what's going to make it easier and more efficient for business. You know, a lot of people like to do everything on their own. Right? They I used to be like that. I used to be like that. Hold up, Whitney, Whitney phone froze. Hold up. Well, until her, her her thing come back, I used to be like that. I was that person that was trying to do everything. Um, and the reason why I was trying to do everything is because my name was on it. My brand, my name is a brand. Like, I, I am on it. So I used to didn't be, I was in the back cooking, you know. And so looking toe up, hair tied, apron, you know, looking toe up. And so uh, what, what brought me from the back up to the front was because people, because the post that I would, would do would go viral a lot. So when I was basically on tour, when I would go to different cities and stuff, they'd be like, who is Ashley Monique? Who is that? Who is that? And so they would want to like see me and meet me and stuff like that. So I had to be more upfront, you know, um, so okay. I could greet, greet people, talk to people. But do you know how hard that was for me? Because I want to touch my food. Well, it's your I baby. Was... You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I started doing like, uh, like you have, I don't know if y'all familiar who's watching the Hell's Kitchen. So, you know, like Gordon Ramsay, like people uh, are bring the plate up and they be like, here you go, chef. So now that's how I can kind of touch my food a little bit. Like I have to open the box. You bring it to me open. Well, I open it when you sit it down and then I inspect it. And then I, and I'm so fucking glad I did that because they be messing up a lot. And it reflects to me, reflect back on me, because people go to the business page, they type the review, you know, and then I'd be like, well, ma'am, I wasn't aware of that. And then a lady checked me respectfully. She was like, well, you hired them. They're a reflection of you. And I was like, she right. So that's when I was like, open the box. And even I got employees that's been working with me for a couple of years, but now I'm going to have to hire more people, new people. And so now they're, I've promoted them per se for the ones that need it, but there's ones that still stuck in the same position that they've been being, even though they feel like they should have a higher position, but they just ain't the work ethic. Certain things aren't there, you just know, because you've been there for years. Don't mean yeah. you deserve that, right? You know, I had a um, I had a um, the first time I ever had gotten help, uh, I had a, a partner that helped me out with a wedding, and I tried to do what you did, tried to take a step back, all that, and I divvied up the responsibility. I worked on the video. She worked on the pictures. Took her almost 
four months to get me those pictures. Now, granted, now we took over 500 pictures. Okay. It's a wedding. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take, I, I like to say, give me the window is between 14 days and two months. Then come start asking me questions. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why, the reason why I don't have your product for you. So these people, I mean, this girl, um, I'm like, hey, they're at the, the client is asking for these pictures. I need to know what to tell them. I don't have the pictures. You have the pictures. So I need to know what's going on. I already got the video done. You know what I'm saying? And um, it just reflect. Uh, that was a lesson learned for me as to the reason yeah. why I wanted to put my hands in everything because yeah. they know I'm over the business. Yep, yeah. it comes you know back. What I'm saying? So it's like it's all it's all about, it's all it's about perception, and that that's the point I was making. Just just piggybacking on what I was saying about the first question. It's just all about perception. The consumer don't want to hear, "Oh, well, I'm still trying to get in touch with my assistant now." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that. You know, they want to hear, okay, we'll have this on this date and we'll either have it before or on the date that I told you. You know what I'm saying? It does make it hard. It makes it so hard. Hey, D. D. Yo. Hey, you know how I roll, how I used to roll football. So I need need workers like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The reflection of like what I do, actually do every day. And that's just what it was, man. And that's what it was back then. And that's what it is now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like right. definitely. Straight like that. Straight like that. Definitely. All right. So we talked, we talked, um, everybody answered, right? Everybody answered. Okay, so let's light, let's lighten up the mood a little bit. So I got a scenario Great. for you. All right. 